you've enjoyed the singing by the choir and the special music, it's always a blessing to hear the songs of Zion sung that lift up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have your Bible today, turn with us in the Word of God to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41. Has God been good to you this week? Say amen. I saw on Facebook, I believe last night, where... Uh, Brother Tim Turner's got him a new job with the government, and uh, I want to congratulate him on his tie-picking job with uh, President Trump. <laughs> Amen. Our new president certainly uh, is catching a lot of flack, uh, but we as the people of God, we are obligated to pray for him. Whether you voted for him or against him, it's not my business. But if you're a Christian today, it is your obligation to pray for him and pray for all of our leaders that uh, they'll do what is right in the sight of God. A lot of times decisions are made uh, that people don't like, and it's simply because their hearts ain't right with God. Amen? Uh, but if you're right with God, you can agree with some things that are going on right now. So uh, let's pray and uh, seek the face of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, if you will stand for the reading of the word of the Lord today. I appreciate Pastor uh, asking us to stand in his place today. I feel honored uh, by doing that, and certainly we want to pray for him, that the Lord would touch and strengthen him and uh, heal him very soon. We miss him today, and... Uh, uh, I'll certainly uh, do our best for the Lord. Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10. The Bible says, fear, th fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Then over in verse 31, chapter 40 and verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's pray. Father in heaven, again today as we bow in your presence, we thank you for your word. Our Lord, I pray, God, that the word of God would be words of everlasting life. I pray, Father, that you'll search out the heart of men and women, boys and girls that may be in your house today under the sound of the gospel. Search us and know us, O oh God. If there be any wicked way in us, I pray that you'll forgive us, cleanse us from every thought, every action, every deed that might be contrary to you and your precious will and word. And I pray most importantly today, Lord, that you'll speak to a heart today that may be unsaved, may this be the day and the hour that they too will come and trust you as their Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated this morning. By the help of the Lord today, we want to preach on this thought. God wants to make a deal. God wants to make a deal. If you grew up under the age that I did, there was a television show that most of us have watched, and it was named Let's Make a Deal. Some of you probably watched that. It came on about 10 o'clock in the mornings, Monday through Friday, and it was uh, led by a man by the name of Monty Hall. And uh, if you remember how the show went, uh, they always had uh, contestants that they'd make them a deal, and they'd say behind door number one or box number one or box number two or box number three, and they'd make a choice of which one they wanted to, uh, to pick. 
And then Monty Hall, he had, of course, tried to make a deal. Well, now if you don't want that, I'll give you $100. Or if you don't want that one, I'll give you $200. Or whatever it might be. And they'd go on and try to make a deal. And, and sometimes the contestants, they'd make a deal and take the cash instead of the box. And they'd uh, sometimes come out to the good and sometimes it was a zonker. It was a bad deal. And this life, we've got a lot of deals that we try to make. And uh, I want to tell you something today, friend. You can't deal with sin and get by. Behold, the Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. Amen. But today, God wants to make a deal with every one of us this morning. And in Isaiah chapter 41, uh, Isaiah writes here, and he says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Here is a text, a man that anticipates the needs of every individual. There are some things here in this verse that every one of us are acquainted with. Some of us today, we know what it's like to be fearful. Some of us know what it's like to be weak. Some of us know what it's like to be helpless, amen. Some of us know what it's like to, amen, not be righteous, but amen. I'm glad that God wants to make a deal for you and I. And uh, the scripture bears it out here in dealing with fear. You know today that there are some fears that every one of us have encountered in life. Some people today, they, they fear death, amen. And certainly if you know the giver of life, you have no fear of death, amen. Some people today are fearful because of failures, past failures. They rob us of the joy of serving the Lord Jesus today and tomorrow. Uh, the fear of losing security. Everybody likes to be safe and secure, amen. I mean, uh, prior to 2001, Amen. November the 11th, 2001, we felt a sense of security on the freedom and the land of the free and the home of the brave. We felt secure in our security as a nation. But then on that uh, dreadful day of September 11, 2001, amen, our security, amen, was breached. And no doubt today, great fear came upon an entire nation at the action of uh, these individuals that flew the planes, amen. Man into the Twin Towers there in New York Harbor. But beloved today, I want to tell you something. Fear is something, amen, that grips all of us sometime. I mean, whenever you get sick and you've been sick for a while and you go to the doctor and the doctor looks at you and examines you and I mean, we're inside out. We're just in turmoil. We're fearful for what the doctor is going to tell us is wrong with us. But beloved, fear, it comes upon us from all generations in all ages, from the young to the aged. Uh, beloved, today fear is something, amen, of the unknown. We, we don't know what, some, what tomorrow holds, but the fear uh, of facing the future. Amen, I told someone recently, Amen. They were talking about dying and they was talking about, amen, having to go to a funeral home and go to a funeral. And amen, I told them, I said, hey, I'm not worried about dying because I know who gives the life. Amen. But if you're ready to face death, you don't have to be fearful of death. Can I get a witness there? Amen. I'm glad I'm ready to die. I don't want to leave on the next load leaving, but I'm ready when the load comes for me. Amen. But fear... Fear is something that comes upon all ages, the fear of the unknown. But may I say to you today, what the world has to give to us in fear, God has an answer for it through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For death, God answers this fear. Amen. Through this, the Word of God said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, Amen. To die is gain. Amen. Mark chapter 8 verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I'm glad 
glad, thank God I met the master one day, amen, who took my sins away. I'm glad I met Jesus who bore my sins upon his cross of Calvary. I'm glad, thank God I met Jesus who said, I'll take away all your sin. I'm glad I met Jesus who said, my blood is powerful enough to do what you cannot do. Amen. My goat that I could have slain or that lamb that I could have slain. Amen. The blood of those things would not satisfy. But thank God today the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will wash away my sins, your sins, and the sins of the whole world. Thank God God answers Amen, these things. Because of death, amen, I'm no longer afraid to die because I know the one who gives life and gives it eternally. Amen. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you know Jesus this morning? Oh, what a pertinent question to ask you today. I'm glad that I know him but better yet, I'm glad he knows me as one of his own. Amen. What about failures in life? We've all encountered those failures. I don't know anybody in this world that hasn't failed at something. I mean, men, they fail in their, uh, in their businesses. They fail in their marriages. Hey Amen. May, may I say today, uh, that we're not a failure if we know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible said, amen, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. It's not about my ability. It's it's not about my knowledge, but it's about the one in whom I know. Amen. Is able to do exceeding abundantly above according to his riches and glory. According to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. I'm glad, thank God, my faith is anchored in the rock of ages this morning. What about my security? You know, financial security is something that uh, a lot of people have. Some people don't have it. But amen, I, I guess we're just like a lot of folks today. We live from week to week. My security is not in, amen, that printed uh, a green piece of paper, amen, that's got a president's picture on it and, amen, the picture of the Lincoln Memorial on the backside of it or whatever, Jefferson Memorial. But may I say to you and I this morning, my security, amen, goes beyond the dollar bill. My security rests, amen, the anchor of my soul. Amen, his name's Jesus this morning. I'm rooted and grounded in him today. The Bible tells us, us, amen, in Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all your need. Amen. Thank God I'm glad I'm serving one. Amen. Who supplies every need. Amen. Every morning he supplies me with the oxygen to breathe, to wake up. Amen. He sounds an alarm in my soul. It allows my eyes to wake up. Amen. It's whenever we get woken up. Amen. He allows us to do the things of life that we do from day to day. Amen. When I'm weak, he gives me strength. When I'm despondent and discouraged, thank God he's my light and my shame as Savior today. I'm glad this morning to tell you he's my everything. I think about my future. Some people try to make up for the future. <coughs> and it's good to make plans for the future. It's good to save for your future. It's good to, amen, to put a little bit back for your future. Amen. Uh, but beloved, my future is not in what I've got in the in stocks and bonds, and it's not what I've got laid up in the IRA. Amen. And it's not what I've got in the banking account and the checking account. But my future, amen, is resting in the Savior who was and is and is yet to come. My future is in his hands. Isaiah said here in chapter 41 and verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Thank God I'm glad I've got a friend that's been with me from day one. Amen. 
November the 13th, 1976, when I came to know him as my Savior. Amen. Thank God he's been with me every step of the way. I'm glad. Amen. I haven't always pleased him. I haven't been who I ought to be, but thank God I'm not who I used to be. Amen. And I'm not who I want to be yet either. Amen. Because I'm still in this world. I'm still imperfect. But praise God, I'm heading to a place. Amen. Of rare perfection. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Praise God this morning. Amen. My future. Amen. Rest in the one who said that he could do everything that I need. Amen. I'm glad he's my supplier. Amen. He's my water when I'm thirsty. He's my, amen. He's my meat when I'm hungry. He's my bread when I'm hungry. He's my shield when I'm a, a facing a battle. Praise God today. He's my armor. Amen, in a time of storm. I'm glad, thank God today, he is my everything today. And if he know, you know him, he's yours to be your everything as well. But my future rests in the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Aren't you glad you've got one who said, I'll be with you always, amen? I'm glad that he's not a friend that's going to be with you part of the way and leave you alone. He's not going to go uh, uh, three-fourths uh, three of the way with you and t- turn loose of you. Praise God, I'm glad I've got a Savior who said, I'll hold thee by thy hand. Amen, and I'm glad, thank God, he'll be with us and he'll hold our hand as long as we're in this life. And when we get ready to step over to the other line. He's still holding to our hand. I'm glad this morning I know one who's able to do that. Amen. And it's not the federal government. Amen. It's not anybody that's sitting up there in Washington, D.C. or in Raleigh, North Carolina or in Charleston, South Carolina or Columbia, South Carolina getting my state capitals mixed up. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something today, friend. Amen. He's better than Obama. He's better than Trump. He's better than Kennedy. He's better than Nixon. He's better than Carter. He's better than any president we've ever had. He's my ruler and master. He's the Lord of everything. God wants to make a deal. But may I say to you this morning, his deal, you'll never get a zonker. Amen. His deal, if you'll deal with him, amen, and you'll come and trust in him and and meet his guidelines, amen, you'll always come out to the good. You'll always come out with a smile. You'll always come out with joy. You'll always come out being blessed of the Lord. Show you some things that God wants to deal. God wants to give you comfort for your confusion. Amen. He said there in Isaiah 41, he said, Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. The word dismay means, why did this happen to me? Sometimes we question why circumstances come and why they happen to poor little old me. And you know what? I can't answer that. I don't know why things happen sometimes. I don't understand why bad things happen to good people. I just don't understand that sometimes. But I know a man who does. And he says, I be not dismayed, for I am with thee. Thank God this morning. He wants to trade his comfort for your confusion. The word confusion means you can't understand why God allows a trial to come your way. You can't understand it, but just accept it that you know that God has a purpose. God has a way. God has a means of working things out for you. Amen. But may I remind us all that God owns us all. Amen. If we're saved today, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 10, or verse 19 rather said, What? Know you not that your body's a living sacrifice? I can't remember that one. I'll have to look it up. 1 Corinthians 
chapter 6 and verse 19. What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. God owns us all as his own. Amen. We are his prized possession. We are his jewels that make up his crown. And one of these days, amen, you know we don't understand why God takes somebody out of this world amen, that uh, he's blessed our home with and he's let them be in our part of our family. We don't understand why God had to take that one at this particular time. It's simply because of this. Amen, God needed another jewel in his crown. Amen. May I remind us all that one of these days we're all going to go to heaven if we know the Lord Jesus, if we've trusted in him. Amen, the best is yet to come because we're trusting him with our future. But God owns us. But whatever comes our way, rest assured if we are trusting in him, whatever comes our way, we belong to him. I'm glad I'm owned by the Lord Jesus. I don't own him. He owns me. Amen. You may say, well, I own a lot of things. But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? and lose his own soul. You can own the biggest house on the hill. You can drive the finest of cars. Amen. You can eat in the fanciest of restaurants. You can have the, the most valuable of clothes. But what is it worth if you die without Jesus? You've lost it all. You've lost it all. God wants to trade his help for your helplessness. There have been some things in life that I couldn't do. I can't, I can't build a house. I can't fix a car. I'm not a mechanic and I'm not a carpenter. I'm not even a plumber. I'm not an electrician. A whole lot of things I'm not, and I'm helpless in a whole lot of areas. But guess what you do? You call the uh, person that you know that specializes in that particular thing that you're going through. Well, I'm no physician. I call on a doctor. Hey, Jesus is our great physician. Call on Jesus. I'm, I, I tell you, now a lot of things we may not be, but there's one thing I can tell you I can be. I can call on Jesus who can do everything. To the architect, he is the master planner. Amen. I mean, the architect, they'll draw up the plans for the buildings and, amen, make good plans. But guess what the, uh, sometimes an architect has to do? They have to go back to the drawing board. So the owner of the building, of the property, they, have, they just don't like the way that's going to look. Well, the architect, he'll go back and he'll change something. He'll take a wall out and he'll redesign a room or something. I mean, uh, an architect, but Jesus is the master architect. You know what he's building for us? If we're saved today, he's building for us a place that is perfect. It's not going to be any under construction anymore, but it's going to be finalized very soon. When the last mansion is completed, Jesus is going to come. When the last soul is saved, Jesus is going to come. I do not know when that time is, but I feel in my soul that it is soon and very soon Jesus is coming. But God wants to trade his help for our helplessness. Whenever you're going through a problem and you don't know what to do, here's the answer. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. When you don't know what to do, call on Jesus. He can do it all. But God wants to trade his righteousness for your unrighteousness. Isaiah 64 and verse 6. Turn there. Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 6. But we are all, and you ought to underline that word. There ain't none of us that can say that we're holy, we're clean, We're righteous. 
Because Isaiah describes it like this in Isaiah 64 and verse 6. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. The word all is used there three times. Don't you think that God means what he says and he says what he means? He's saying there, as good as you think that you are, your righteousness is as a filthy rag. Sometimes at work we'll take a rag and we'll wipe the machinery down and, and because of the, the, the material we use, it's got oil in it, it's got dirt in it, it's got grease in it. And you take that rag and you wipe the machine down and you look at that rag and you hold it up and it's filthy. It's blotted with grease and oil and stains. And I thought about my filthy unrighteousness and I held up that rag yesterday at work and I looked at that and the thought came to my mind, your righteousness is worse than this filthy rag. I can't save myself. You can't save yourself. But God wants to make a deal. He'll take your unrighteousness, your filthiness, and he'll take it away and he'll cleanse it by his righteousness of his hand. God wants to make a deal with us, folks. He wants to trade his righteousness for your filthy rags. Jesus is the only one that can make us righteous. And he does that through and by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1 and 11 and verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't understand how a wire coming from down the road on a pole to pole to pole comes over here to a, a meter base at the back of the church and wires come from that meter base throughout the buildings and attaches to a light switch and you turn that light switch on and these lights come on. I don't understand how that works. But you know what? I'm not going to sit in the dark till I figure it out. Hello? I don't understand how God, amen, can take the blood of a lamb and apply it to the doorpost and the lentils of a home, amen, and, and the death angel would pass over it. I don't understand how that could happen, but it did. And I don't understand how an old sinner like me can walk down an aisle and kneel at an altar and call unto God to take away my sin. I don't understand how he did it. But I just praise God that he did do it. Amen. I'm glad that he saved me. And if he can save me, he can certainly save you. For whosoever will, let him call upon the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 16. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad, thank God, that he saved me. He washed me from my sins. And the best is yet to come. Thinking about my future. I had a future when I was lost that I was headed to a place called hell. According to Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31, there was a place described there that had two people in that uh, scripture. One by the name of Lazarus, the other man was unnamed, but historians said his name is Dives. This Dives was the rich man. The rich man uh, fared sumptuously every day. Didn't have want of nothing. Had it all. But yet he was missing the most important thing. He was missing God in his life. And he died as well as Lazarus died. Lazarus died in Abraham's bosom. Amen. And he saw, amen, Lazarus or in a, had, saw the rich man in, in hell, and he lifted up his eyes, and he saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Amen. He had it all, but yet he wound up in the wrong place. You may have everything in life, but you're without Jesus. You're going to wind up in the wrong place. 
But you may be a pauper this morning like Lazarus was. But if you've got faith in Jesus Christ and you die, hey man, you'll go to heaven and you've gained it all. God has your future ahead of you. He wants to make a deal for your future. He wants to take your hell and give you his heaven. Amen. You don't have to go to hell, but you can go to heaven. The choice is yours. Let's make a deal is what God's saying. And it's behind the right door. Make the right choice. What choice is that, preacher? Choose Jesus. John chapter 14 and verse 6, and I'm closing. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the way. One way to heaven, and that's through Jesus. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through Allah. It's not through any of the other religious leaders of this world, but it's only through and by the Lord Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior of the world. John identified him as the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. God says, I want to make a deal. If you're here today and you're a sinner, you're unsaved, I want to make a deal with you. I'll give you heaven if you'll just accept me as your Savior. I'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. I'll wash away all your sins if you'll trust in me. Well, that sounds like a good deal to me. I'm glad I trusted him. I want to be living for him all the days of my life. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Why? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Are you ready for heaven? Have you made that deal with God? Have you trusted him as your Lord and Savior? If not, God wants you to today. Behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. While every head is bowed and every eye closed, if we will get an invitational number.